Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, so I haven't had cable TV in a while. So whenever, you know, a couple times a year, I get a chance to watch cable TV. I'm always kind of fascinated by it to see how it's changed, to see how it's stayed the same, to see how it's still awful. Now I quit cable so long ago because I think I was paying way over $100 a month for cable. And I was basically watching L.A. Inc. and Clone Wars. The funny thing is I canceled my cable and then they just never came around to cancel it. So I got it free for another year after I canceled it, which is a better deal than my gym that said it's $50 to lower each tier. Because I, I had a gym where I got like the best tier, but then I just used the basic stuff. So I, I said like, I just use the basic stuff. Just lower me down to the, to that one. And they're like, oh, we got to charge you $50 for every tier you go down. And I was like, how much does it cost for me to just quit the gym? They're like, $45. <laughs> so quitting was half as expensive as just lowering my bill. So anyway, I'm going around the channels. And um, uh, I think a year or so ago I did uh, a video, I think on this channel, maybe the other one, about how weird like old people cop shows are now um so i think it's mainly cbs that has them you know it's all this uh, ncis those type of shows and they got really weird uh b because of you know being woke sjw pc <laughs> pc sounds so old politically correct like uh these shows used to have like five regulars and now they have more than 10 because it's like noah's ark like you have to have one of every, you have to have one black guy, one black woman. You have to have one gay guy, one gay woman. You have to have one Hispanic man, one like it's. And so they're always doing these briefing scenes where like every single person gets like two lines. Um, and then uh, the bad guys are almost always the Russians. And you might say like, oh, that's topical. No, no. <laughs> it's like for the last 10 years, every villain is Russians because that's like the safe villain. <laughs> um, so, uh, and there's always like military stuff. Like everyone's always like robbing the military base. Uh, the best line from the episode of <laughs> the best line from the episode of the rookie I saw last night was somebody went to go rob, uh, a national guard armory and they go, there's enough weapons there to arm an entire platoon. <laughs> A platoon is like 30 to 50 people. Like, <laughs> there's going to be... Oh, that was so stupid. First of all, the smallest National Guard armory is for a company, not a platoon. It's it's just a dumb thing to say. So, uh, this is a show called The Rookie. I think it's, I don't know, season three or four. It's uh, Nathan Fillion from uh, Serenity Firefly. And it's since he's done some geek stuff he was in Joss Whedon's Dr. Horrible he was the voice for Green Lantern he like for some reason that show gets covered in the geek media a lot it's like oh season three of the rookie uh did, like what <laughs> the average <laughs> the average age of uh the viewer of the rookie is hospice um so I was like, okay, whatever. I've never seen this show. Let me see what it's like. It's kind of weird because Nathan Fillion, he's like in his 50s. He's fat. Um, but everyone likes him. He's kind of like older, fatter Ryan Reynolds. Um, so I watch and it's the cliche. It, like he's a beat cop, you know, just like a street cop in uniform. It's like his third year. But he's in some task force <laughs> with like the FBI, but like he's not even like a he's he, he's 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 a street cop in a uh, task force. For if you don't know what a task force is, you're gonna get people from multiple different agencies, uh, sometimes from the military, and the the they will all work together. Um, that's like the easy get out of jail free card for bad writing in all of these shows. You're like, uh, why is a, a street detective in L.A. Um, in a you know, freaking uh, military uh, flight over freaking Uzbekistan. Well, he's on a task force. Okay, he's on a task force. Task force and dark web will get you out of any bad writing. You just say, oh, it's a task force that monitors the dark web. So anyway, it's a, 
it sounded like they were cu- they were going from some subplots from other uh, episodes. Um, but this one was uh, they were going to rob a National Guard armory. <laughs> and like the wokeness. I actually feel like as bad as we had it in comics, when it got to other places, it was so much worse. Because they weren't really ready for it. We, we had the wokeness kind of slowly dialed up, but for like CBS cop shows for old people, it was just something that just slammed into them like a freaking nor'easter or something like that. So they, so the, the, uh, it's a Russian and he goes up to the gate guard uh, at a National Guard armory. If it's just an armory, they don't have a gate guard. It's just going to be a building. Um, and it's a black guy who's of course extremely wimpy and effeminate and they're like give us access to the weapons or we'll kill your husband and like it's like of course of course the black guy at in the military is gay and, and like it's like we'll kill your husband and they keep like emphasizing the word husband so then they have what I think is the second lead, which again, the show is supposed to be about like a middle-aged guy. Cause in America, in some cities, there's either no limit on law enforcement or it's, it's really high. You just have to be able to do like 20 years and retire. So you can be in like your mid forties and still join the police force. Um, so you would think that the second lead would be like another cop, you know what I mean? Or like, the desk sergeant, but the second lead is an FBI agent. It's a black woman who, um, you know how I said that Will Smith songs sound like fake songs you would hear in an episode of, uh, 30 rock. Every black character in this show, uh, is like a black character you would see in, uh, mad TV, something like that. Uh, so, um, I think it might have been Niecy Nash, but like every black character. Oh, you know what it reminds me of? There was this really good G.I. Joe cartoon from a few years ago uh, that Warren Ellis wrote, G.I. Joe Resolute. And it was good, except for it had one problem. They went really cheap on the voice actors. And there were literally only like five voice actors in the entire show. So you started noticing, you're like, how come these five different characters? Oh, my. And then you look at the credits, only five. So a couple of them are like white guys doing like black voices or no, like it's one white guy doing a couple black voices and the black voices sound like when, uh, Mac, uh, plays a black guy on, uh, when they do lethal weapon movies on it's always sunny. So (laughs) you have the black woman and she's like the most stereotypical voice ever. And then she's got her dad and he's got like the soulful saint and like, their conversations are what white liberals think black people talk about. They have conversations and 100% of their conversations between like the black daughter, black daughter and her black father are like Miles Davis, <laughs> jazz, Martin Luther King and racism. <laughs> That's all they talk about. It's hilarious. And so the dad was like in prison for, for what? A crime he didn't commit, of course, because like all crimes in this world are committed by white Russians. Um, and so he's out and his daughter's in the FBI, FBI and he doesn't like that. She's like, I'm not even going to do the voice because like I'm going to do the voice. She's like, oh, I'm not going to. I can't do the voice. I'll, <laughs> the channel will go down. It's like, that's racist. It's like, that's literally the voice. I, I'm literally doing the voice. But she's like, uh, uh, he's like, I can't believe you work for the FBI. And she's like, the FBI is the one who, uh, uh, you know, uh, got you out of jail. They proved that you were framed. And he's like, but the FBI framed the other black people. It's like, so what was it like? We're going to frame a lot of black people, but not this um, FBI agent, soulful saint dad. <laughs> and also they do background checks like an FBI agent got into the FBI with her dad in prison. What? Okay. So like all she talks about is like racism. And also it's like, she starts talking about like factoids. She's like, I have to be uh, an FBI agent. Do you know only 1% of the FBI is black women? Like, <laughs> what? 
guy just said he hates the FBI. He doesn't care about like, and also like that's such a like white liberal. It's like, what do you think black people talk around, talk about when they're not around us? It's like, they probably talk about Miles Davis <laughs> and they look up statistics on hiring. So then this, uh, even though there's a task force, uh, the black woman, and again, it's Nathan Fillion's show. She solves like everything. And then uh, she's supported almost entirely by other minorities and women. Um, and uh, at one point she presents her case to like an old racist uh, FBI agent. And he's like, and like she lays out the entire case and he has a sour face like, I can't believe this mammy isn't making pancakes. <laughs> it's like 2022. You know, she would be like the star. They're like, we got to get you on the news because it's going to show us. The FBI is going to look so good. We got this uh, black woman with like a voice of an 1800 slave. And she just solved an entire like massive terror plot by herself. Um, it, this is amazing. Um, but uh, I, I mean... I'm actually forgetting bits, and if you heard the voices, like, <laughs> the voices, it's got to be, so, I, what I, this is what I want, a show that's about black actors and actresses in Hollywood, how they talk shit about the terrible scripts they get, like, on the break, they're like, can you believe they got us talking about, like, Miles Davis, like, what am I, like, 100 years old? My great grandpa talked about him like once. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That and Martin Luther King. You know, that's all we ever talk about all the time. <laughs> so I had this weird kind of like sympathy for people. Um, who is it? I saw like a little clip from a live stream. I think it was Az and Nerd Rotic and, and a couple other people. And they were talking about how like comics was the proving ground for wokeness and then it spread. And I honestly feel like we got it. Like, you know, we slowly got used to it. Whereas other media, like CBS cop shows for old people, they just got slammed. <laughs> I cannot imagine what it's like to be in some retirement home. It's like, uh, is Miles Davis cool again? <laughs> <laughs> like a, literally a 79 year old is like i remember my older brother list what the hell's going on uh, for the record that's an old white person voice not an old black person voice um but uh yeah so um if you're feeling angry about what wokeness did to comics just realize that we we were able to adjust in ways that other people were not and it, I woke up and I just, I, I, I felt like that was a dream. I go, no, that was real. It was all real. <laughs> Every single, and the funny of it is like, can you describe the Russian? It's like, oh, he was tall and uh, blonde and he had a scar. It's like, was his name Ivan Drago? <laughs> like, <laughs> we've seen the footage from Ukraine. The average height of, of Russian seems to be like five foot nine. Why are we still using this Ivan Drago stereotype of Russians from the 80s? Anyway, thanks for watching.